What's up, dude? I'm gonna show you how to turn a cheap piece of meat, much like this one right here, into melt-in-your-mouth, unbelievable, tender, flaky meat perfection. It's a straightforward eight-step process, and as always, my friends, there is no time to waste. Now let's go, let's go! The first thing you need to do is definitely choose the right meat for the job. There are many different kinds of beef you could use for slow cooking. Here are some of the most popular cuts you are gonna see out there that are also on the cheaper end. I also have items like oxtails and short ribs on this list that are definitely more expensive but are certainly some of my favorites. Today I went ahead and chose chuck roast. This is definitely one of my go-tos when it comes to a cheaper meat that you can braise and turn it into something that's super tender. And just remember when you're choosing your beef you're looking for intermuscular fat. That's fat marbled inside of the meat. All you need to really do here is take off some of that excess fat. We don't want this to be too fatty. Having said that though fat is also flavor and so we do want to leave a little bit on that can only do us a lot of good. I'll add my beef trimmings here to a little pot. I'll just add a little bit of water to that pot and cook it over low heat for two to three hours so I can get a full extraction of that fat. It may not seem like much, but I'll make some amazing Yorkshire puddings with that. Upon cutting into the meat, you can now really see that inner muscular fat that is perfect when you're slow cooking or braising meat. You may also encounter some of this tough and chewy silver skin. You definitely don't want to leave that on. Just take a small knife and slide it under to remove that layer. I'll then just cut it into large cubes like this. Not too big, not too small. Just to prove a point, here is a fillet mignon, a piece of beef you would never want to braise. And I can just stick my finger through it with so much ease, it just goes through like butter. That's a steak you definitely want to cook medium rare. Now here's a piece of our chuck roast, and if I try to do the same thing, it is actually pretty much impossible to do. That is the kind of meat we want to braise. Time to start the process. I'm first going to just hit this with some kosher salt. Master Sergeant Gilbert, reporting for duty! That's just sentient black pepper, and we're going to go ahead and do this on both sides of our chuck. The next question you may be wondering is whether or not you should sear your beef. Searing the beef is definitely going to leave more flavor into the stock you cook it in. It's going to give you a better and darker look just with that amazing crust and it'll also render more fat leaving less in the sauce at the end. However, if you choose not to sear your meat, you are definitely going to save on time as well as having a much easier time cleaning up because as we all know, searing beef on the stove can make a bit of a mess. And finally, because you didn't put a crust on the meat, it is going to be a little bit softer in the end. If you choose to sear your beef, take a pan and get that thing ripping hot over high heat, add some neutral cooking oil, and then carefully lowering in your chunks of chuck roast to get a nice sear going. You want to do this for about four or five minutes per side or until you see a nice dark brown crust forming like this. Take your time here and give each piece of meat a little love, flipping it over as necessary, making sure to brown it all the way around for that optimum sear. The next step of this process is simply going to be to choose your vegetables and aromatics. Some popular choices would be things like carrots, onions, celery, shallots, leeks, tomatoes, mushrooms if you like them. For aromatics, you have choices like garlic, bay leaf, peppercorns, thyme, parsley, rosemary, fennel is one that I happen to love. Today, I'm going really simple with my choices. I'm just using some shallots, some onions, and some carrots. I'll peel the carrots and then just slice those into large pieces. The onions and shallots, I'll just half. I'll take off the top and the root end and then just peel them. For certain recipes, you may want to cut the vegetables into smaller pieces, but for this purpose, I just want to extract the flavor. The last thing I'll do is add a few aromatics in cheesecloth. This is just some fresh thyme and some whole peppercorns and we just wrap that up and tie it up. You could also add things like bay leaf, garlic to this if you want, but today I'm just keeping it really simple. This is our little tea bag of flavor. Next, you want to choose the liquid you're actually going to be cooking the meat in. Some popular choices for this would be things like beef stock, chicken stock, vegetable stock, soy based stock like you would see shoyu chicken made in, a tomato based stock, and even water is absolutely fine to use. I'm using beef stock today for this braise because, well, we're using beef and it just makes sense. Go ahead and add all your vegetables into that stock as well as your little tea bag of aromatics followed after by the beef. And we certainly don't want to make an amateur mistake by wasting all of that beautiful crust on the bottom of the pan you seared the beef in, so just put a little hot stock into the pan and scrape it off and add that back into the pot. The next step is going to be to choose your temperature and your cooking method. You could do this on your stove top, you could do this in the oven like you'll see me do it here, you could use a slow cooker, you could use a smoker or something fancy like a sous vide. For best results you definitely want to go low and slow so I would recommend between 225 to 275 degrees Fahrenheit or 107 degrees to 135 degrees Celsius. I'll add a cracked lid onto my pot and get my beef into the oven. We're gonna do this at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Step six is easy. Go read a book, watch some Netflix, and let that collagen break down into gelatin. Here's our meat one hour into the cook and as you can see here I'm trying to pull it apart and it is just so tough and chewy at this moment. This is honestly one 
when the meat is at its absolute worst and chewiest, and this is not good braised meat. At one and a half hours, it is slightly more tender, but still pretty chewy. We are getting there, but we're not there yet. After two hours, it's ever so slightly more tender, but it is still a little bit chewy. We are getting there, just hang on. Two and a half hours in, and you can really feel that that collagen is now starting to break down into gelatin. The results are coming in. We are certainly almost at the finish line. Three hours in, and our meat is officially braised. It's falling apart like butter, and depending on the size that you cut your beef into, you may need to cook it a little longer or even a little bit shorter. The next step is one that requires no work, but has absolutely massive results. One huge mistake I see people making when they braise beef is they take it out of the liquid right when it's done. Huge mistake, rest it in the liquid it cooked in for one hour and it is gonna be so much more tender, you gotta trust me on that one. And if you wanna get really technical, pour some of your stock over the beef and leave it in the fridge overnight. Here you can see the results of doing just that and the beef is unbelievably tender now. It really does make a huge difference, my friends. Now, I can't just show you how to do all that and not tell you how you can thicken your sauce in a couple different ways. First things first, we just need to go ahead and remove all our veggies from the broth. They have done their job at this point. And while they may be mush, they are delicious snacks. Before proceeding, I'm just gonna take a pastry brush and dip that into my stock and clean off all this fawn that was left on the pot. That's all essentially a flavor that belongs in the stock as well as it saves you a lot of time on cleanup. I'm gonna show you two easy ways you can thicken up your braise. The first will be a roux. To do this, just melt some butter into a small pot or pan and then add in your flour. You're going for a wet sand type of consistency with this. And all you need to do is cook this down and watch your nose. And by that, I mean you're gonna smell the difference of when this flour starts to cook. Depending on how long you cook it, you are gonna get a different type of roux. I'm cooking this one for 15 to 20 minutes over low heat to get a blonde roux. Now you may not need all of this roux to thicken your sauce, so we're gonna dump that out and it will save for a long time in your fridge for future use. Look, I'm not a perfect human and for some reason I used a non-stick pan along with enameled cast iron for this. So I had to use a spatula instead of a whisk but stainless steel pots with a whisk would be preferred. To begin thickening your sauce, we're gonna add the stock to the roux and really work it in little by little before adding more and repeating that same process. The trick to a good sauce is always to work it so we're gonna keep adding that stock just one ladle full at a time and working it in until we have a really smooth paste and then add Add some more. When you have a consistency sort of like this, at this point we're gonna add that back into the whole pot with the braised beef. Doing it this way ensures you're gonna have a smooth and luscious sauce in the end and not as many lumps. I would also recommend adding it little by little back into the big pot of braised beef so you don't end up with a sauce that's too thick. I kept adding it in little by little until I had a gravy-like consistency that I was happy with. I'll then finish it with a little bit of black pepper and rosemary salt if you know you know and trust me when I say this is absolutely Absolutely delicious. I'm gonna show you another way to thicken your sauce and with this one I'm using a piece of chuck roast that I cooked unseared for six hours as one large piece. It then rested overnight in the braising liquid for peak tenderness. I'm going a little bit freestyle here. I had this non-alcoholic dark ale beer in my fridge. I'm gonna start with that in a pan. I'll reduce that by 80% before adding in some Worcestershire sauce and finally some of the beef stock that it cooked in. I'm just gonna strain that in so I end up with a really nice sauce. I'll reduce this down by another 60 to 70 percent and keep in mind if you're using a really rich gelatinous beef stock you may not even need to do this next step because it will thicken on its own but if you don't have homemade beef stock just take some cornstarch and some water mix that together to form a slurry and begin whisking that into your sauce little by little you don't want to do too much at once because if you over thicken your sauce it will be destroyed for me using a roux has a nicer flavor but using one of these slurries will give you a shiny more beautiful sauce I'll add my large chunk of chuck back in here on low heat and just begin basting it with this sauce to warm it back up. And if that doesn't look appetizing to you, my friends, I do not know what to tell you. So roux or cornstarch slurry, which one do you prefer? Time to taste these alive. All right, I, mean, I think you saw on the thumbnail, but I mean, just look at that. Just look at that. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. If I'm being really honest, I think taking the extra time to do a piece of meat like this is just so awesome. is as good as it gets, oh my god. Having said that, nothing wrong with the small cube version either, totally cool. Mm, mm. Honestly, I really prefer the flavor I get from a roux rather than cornstarch slurry. It just gives it a deeper, richer kind of flavor. I would say the stew is more kind of home cooked style. This is more restaurant-y. Both of these are just delicious though, absolutely delicious. Drop a like on the video. You know I love you! Bro.